Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Friends, here is a value that starts paying dividends immediately and keeps on paying in years to come. It's new RPM motor oil. The oil that doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. Try it at your independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Now, tonight's story, The Noose Hangs High, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, I'm J.H. McQ. I'm editor of the local Sunny Magazine section, and come to think of it, I've always wanted to run a feature on you, that crazy ad and all, but I figured the true revelations of a Turkish secret policeman had more family appeal, and so I forgot about it. Anyhow, this letter concerns a different matter. Valentine, I'm going to make a report of you. You're going to be the author of a serial on the Tover Emeralds. What became of the exotic prince's wedding stones? Did the eminent ornithologist Ansel Fairweather find them, or didn't he? What was the mysterious curse that brought death to Fairweather ten years ago? Read it. The riddle of the two recluses. Why have the two Binks brothers brothers refused to to cross the threshold of their own gloomy mansion? And for that very same ten years. What is the mystery of number 37 Ashton Street? Well, well, isn't it the greatest story you ever heard? Well, Mr. McHugh... I noticed you came trotting over here fast enough. I tell you, it's the best feature we've had for years. Since the last mummy sued King Tut for alienation of affections. What? Well, I always preferred the classic case history of the two-headed werewolf. (laughs) Now, see here, both of you. Oh, come on now, McHugh. You've been mashing your own corn too long. I gather all the purple double talk has something to do with a man named Ansel Fairweather. Well, I looked him up. He tied a rope around a chandelier and hung himself at 37 Ashton Street ten years ago. Ten years ago today in a gloomy brownstone. Control your local color. He'd been to the Himalayas looking for rare birds once. He was probably one himself. But any talk about emeralds is strictly for the birds, too. Ones like you. Well, I may have overstressed that aspect a bit. Just a bit. All right, forget them. Look at the facts. It took a jury to decide his death was suicide, didn't it? Well, it was a very unfair trial of his two cronies, yes. The Binks brothers. And they still live in that same house. Never stepped out of it since. Oh, we didn't know that. (laughs) I thought not. That's the story. The rest is all trimmings, I'll admit. Big Jerry Binks and little Tom Binks have holed themselves up for ten years in the place where Fairweather committed suicide. Why? It only took two minutes for the jury to exonerate them of his murder, if that's what you're driving at. Fairweather was sick, despondent, out of his mind. No, no, no. I'm not trying to say they killed him. And to be unfairly accused of his murder might make anyone withdraw from the world a little. You think I'm trying to make something out of nothing? Cook up a story that's a little too wild? (laughs) We think you're an expert at it. Uh, No offense, of course. Not at all. And of course, you understand, Mr. Valentine, I would no more seriously think of hiring you even to write your own name than I would jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, now, that's better. Well, now that we get that off our chest, what do you really want me for? Facts. For nine years, I've tried to get a little anniversary story on Jared and Tom Bink. Uh Why they're such reclusives. Are they? Really? Every reporter I ever sent, and don't worry, they've been clever about it, too, has been thrown out on his ear. To my knowledge, the brothers have never been outside that house. And no visitor has ever been inside it. Why? You get the facts. I'll write the story. You get paid. before I see you thrown out. Brooks, you're a sadist. Look, you go and check on Fairweather's death, would you? Uh Uh-oh. Here's the little one. 
Oh, and how do you do, sir? My name is Valentine. How do you do? I represent the City Fire Protection League, Department of Fire Inspection Service, in the interest of fire pre- prevention. I'm sure you won't mind my taking a few minutes of your time for an examination of the premises before I... Well, what's the matter, friend? You're not listening. Well, uh, perhaps they have a card here which is, will... Uh... Uh, is that girl with you? What? Me? No, I was just asking directions. Uh... Uh, you're not busy, young man. Huh? Uh, you're free for the next few hours, perhaps? Well, I... Uh, uh, thank heaven. Uh, come in, come in. Oh, please, do come in. Uh, I'm so glad to see you. Uh, yes, come right in. Oh, Jerry, Jerry, where are you? We have a visitor. Isn't that wonderful? What in uh, the Jerry? name? Let's come right in. George, are you sure it's the right house? Somebody's house? throwing curves. Now work fast, will you, Angel? I'll see you later. Yeah, good luck. Uh, yes, yes, hurry, Jared. Uh, uh, this way, sir. Uh-huh. Uh, Valentine, you say? Uh, yes, yes, that's right. You're uh, Tom Binks? Uh, oh, yes, yes, quite. Tom Binks. Uh-huh. Some house you have here. Don't you ever open the shutters? Uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, forgive the lack of furniture. We've never bothered about the hallways. And the parlor in there makes such a handy place to store things, don't you think? Uh, we're very informal here. Oh, brother, there's an understatement. Pile of magazines, clothes, boxed up books. Oh, oh look out! Oh, this way, please. Hey, here. What's the matter? Afraid of a loose chain on the chandelier? What? Oh, no. No, not at all. Oh, oh, yeah, sure. The chandelier. That's what Fairweather hung himself from, isn't it? I thought you said you were from the fire department. Of course it's where he hung himself. One of it. Why, well, Mr. Merton. What are you doing here, young man? Well, I invited him in. There's no reason... You might answer the same question, friend. I thought these guys lived alone. <laughs> The name is Merton. Binks boys aren't crazy. I am. I handle their business affairs. Mr. Merton is just on his way out. Yes, see what I mean? I've been trying to leave for the past three hours. Now Tom kicks me out. Oh, no, no. But I think all of our That's business... because you walked in. I make one visit a year to this place. I spend the rest of the year calming down. I don't follow you, but I guess that's all right. Yeah, of course you don't. Who could? You don't know it, but you've been tapped to take my place holding hands. What? Now, now, Mr. Valentine is interested in our work, and I was just going to show him through the house. It's all yours, son. You scare the boogeyman for a while. The boogeyman? Yeah, sure. (laughs) Make a good story for you. Now, come on, tell the truth. What newspaper are you from? Newspaper? None. But what's the story? Oh, I don't really care who you are. Tom, where's my coat? Oh, oh, I I hung it up. I'll get it for you. Boogeyman. That's the story, you know. It's a haunted house. Okay, Buster, I'm dumb. What's going on? So am I. Valuable property, but kept in a mess. Good securities, but all gummed up. A couple of loony clients, that's all. Well, look around you. Nuts. Lived alone so long, they imagined that... No, this... no. Hey, but... what's the matter? The light court, Merton, look. Oh, Jared. Jared, come oh, down here. Oh, for the love of... What? Hey, you see, another knot. It's tied in a knot like the others. The light cord in the closet here. Tied in a hangman's knot. A noose. He's found some others around like that. Well, now, who's the practical joker that did this? None of us. That's it. None of us ties those knots. Uh, What is it, Tom? What is it? Look, look here. I didn't do it. Well, of course you didn't. No one did. Oh, Jared, this is Mr. Valentine. I asked him to... I could hear you from upstairs. I could hear. I don't think it is good to ask people in. <laughs> hey, you see, young fellow, you haven't got a card to the club like I have. You have finished your business, Mr. Martin. Get out. Uh, Jared, now wait. I, I know what happens when people come in, but... I'm not afraid of any nooses. There is nothing for anybody to be afraid of. Please, Jared. Perhaps you tie the nooses yourself, Tom. Uh, what? Perhaps you don't know that you do. But it's all right. There's nothing to be afraid of. No, no, I don't. It occurred to me when I saw the shadow on the stairway from this same noose, I suppose. What shadow? Stairway? No, no, this door was shut. Oh, brother. Now, take it easy, Tom. Look. Yes, you can see it on the wall. It's a shadow of a noose this time. Yeah, sure. From upstairs here. Only place it could have come from. 
There is nobody else in the house, Mr. Valentine. Hey, now you can't see the shadow anymore down there. Oh, Jared, for the love of God. Well, that does it. I'm getting out of here. Where's your telephone? There's one in the library, but we don't want any policemen. This is nothing to be upset about. Who said anything about policemen? Hey, they've got an extension. They'll listen while you call. Come on with me to the drugstore. Let them listen. I'm like you are, Jared. I'm not nervous. I don't get a gilly feeling when I look at a noose. Not yet. Hello, operator. Get me. Hello? Hello? Mr. Valentine? Oh, Mr. Valentine. Uh, I wondered if you were on the telephone. Oh, uh, Mr. Valentine. Mr. Val- Valentine. Shut up. All right, I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah? Hello, is Miss... George, is that you? Brooksy. What's the matter? You sound so funny. Everything's funny. I was just going to call you when the world caved in. What? I was going to tell... Hey, Tom Brinks. Looks like he fainted or something. George, for heaven's sake. He's crazy. They're all crazy. The whole place is crazy, Brooksy. So am I. Now, listen, Angel. I was going to tell you the malarkey out here was too thick to be true. But I guess I'm wrong. I guess I was saved by the bell when you called. Will you please tell me... On account me of what... everybody sees nooses out here. Well, now I do, too. What? Yeah, Angel. There's one made out of rope neatly draped around my neck. Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. In the next few seconds, I'm going to tell you a short story in sound effects. Listen. That's the artificial wind your car creates when you're driving around 30 miles an hour. Now, that's the sound of tiny particles of road dirt and dust hitting the body of your car. And... That's the sound of a drop of water on the body of your car after it's been exposed to the sun's heat for a few hours. Now, those are the three troublemakers in my story. Wind, grime, and heat. They can literally put an end to your car's finish, make it dull and drab instead of slick and shiny the way you want it. What to do about these three? Get dependable auto body protection. Here's where the hero of the story comes in. The car saver at your nearby independent Chevron gas station or standard station. He has a complete line of protective, easy-to-use body washes, cleaners, and polishes for your car next time it gets the beauty treatment. In these balmy spring days and throughout the year, keep your car looking its best with the quality waxes, cleaners, chrome polishes, and finish preservers your car saver stocks. Ask him about them next time you stop in for Chevron Supreme Gasoline, RPM Motor Oil, and Car Saver Service at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations, where they say and mean, we take better care of your car. to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. The two Binks brothers, Jared and Tom, two recluses whose friend hung himself ten years ago. And now the Binks brothers are seeing the shadow of a noose. Light cords and sash cords have been tied with hangman's knots. Well, if your name is George Valentine, the whole thing looks a little wild to you. That is, until you yourself get knocked out and come to with a rope around your neck. Angel, I don't know what hit me, I tell you. But, George... You got a plenty the... sore neck, though. If I hadn't telephoned... 
Someone must have been trying to kill oh, you. Oh, Booksy Skipper, will you? I'm all right. What did you find? Well, all that silly stuff about emeralds may not have been so silly. Huh? What? Oh, Mr. Fairweather's death ten years ago was suicide. But he was supposed to have picked up some stones in India, and the only ones they've ever found have been in Kansas. Just one or two. Oh, you make a lot of sense. How would some of the Tover emeralds get in Kansas if they're supposed to be lost somewhere in India? I mean, someone must have found them. Uh, and... Yeah. Only the police don't know who. That's right. And there's nothing illegal anyway. If they were found, somebody just sold it. Angel, I love you. What? You're fitting the first piece into the jigsaw. Only this house out here is such a big barn of a place with so many rooms and so much junk that we... That what? That I'll call you back in 15 minutes. Hello. Who are you? Cleaning lady at the booby hatch. Oh, lady with jokes, huh? I worked in a real booby hatch once. Come in to bring their week's food for the binks, that's all. I'm a long order cook now. Hermit's got to eat, don't they? Only, say, what did you do to Tom there? Nothing. He fainted. He's all right. Yeah. Ain't he a funny one? Spends all of his time drawing birds. Looks kind of like a sparrow himself. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing? Put him down. I know where I'm at. I was a nurse once. Oh, I'm all right. No, please. Every time I come to this place, something crazy happens. Um, there's a man out back to see you, Mr. Binks. Uh, what's that, Mabel? That man who owns the house. That Fairweather. Fairweather? Man who owns... Is it? any of your business, mister? Duchess, go tell the man to wait. What? Yeah, you're losing your job as nurse. Get out. I never trusted anyone, Mr. Valentine. I was tried for murder once, Jared and I, but we hadn't done anything... Do you know what it's like to be tried to... Sure, make? sure, Mr. Banks, but I'm only trying to help. There's nothing secret about our work. All those crates of specimens downstairs, birds. That's what they are. We've collected them from all over the world, and I am drawing them, uh, Jared and I. For ten years? Oh, it will take much, much longer than that. Uh, we don't work very fast, and there are more than 7,000... Yeah, sure, I get the idea. And Ansel Fairweather was your partner in that work. He was an ornithologist, I remember. So now explain who this other Fairweather is who's alive and waiting for you out back. Uh, a cousin of Ansel's. He's been trying to get the house. Mabel said he owned it. Well, he has some old deed that Ansel gave him. He says it's quite valuable property. That's why we're moving. Moving? Well, didn't you know? That's why the birds are all crated. We're being thrown out of the house next week. Oh. Huh. Well, why didn't you buy it? Why'd you let him get it? You guys have, uh money, don't you? Or something worth money, maybe? Uh, now, see here, young man. You told me you were some sort of a fire inspector. I asked you into the house, and all you do is ask questions. Just like all the rest. Jared told me not to talk to people. He warned me. Every time anyone gets take near... Take it easy. They... Take it easy. Only suppose I go out and talk to the new landlord, huh? Hey, all this stuff on the back porch, do you suppose it's going too, Mr. Fairweather? How should I know? A couple of blame crackpots. I'll have the house torn down as soon as they get out. Yeah, sure. Go over it inch by inch, huh? What's that, Mr. Valentine? Never mind. You're a real estate man, huh? A business deal? Business deal, that's all it is. I know. I met that lawyer or whatever he is of theirs. Huh? Oh, Merton, yeah. sure. Just saw him down at the drugstore. And he's smart. He won't even eat their food. He didn't offer to buy the place for them, though, huh? Mac, a cousin of mine I never met, used to live with these bird birds here. So that's ancient history. But a friend of mine discovered this old deed, and I found I could get the place. So why not? So I've got it. Mm hmm. Got a key, too, I suppose. To come in and out any time. What? Thirty rooms, three stairs, an army could be wandering around. <laughs> Trash, bro. What's eating you, anyway? Just because I won't sell a house to Looney and Goony Binks? Well, sure, they offered to buy it. What of it? I'm in real estate. I got plans for the whole block. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Just stop justifying yourself. Hm. Flashlight. Oh, go jump in the lake. Hey, how long do you figure it'd take to tear this house apart uh, if a man wanted to find some emeralds? <laughs> oh, that old story. You're just another loony yourself, huh? Well, I'm in business, friend, and I don't so have... So blame much junk, isn't there? Here. 
Ever see a flashlight rigged up like this? Hmm. What's that wire thing? Found it in the trash barrel. When you put the button on, see? The wire's twisted around in a circle. Makes a nice shadow out there on the back wall. Hmm. Shadow of a noose. Jared! Jared! What in the name of... Jared! Tom, where are you? What's happened? The chandelier. The noose. He's dead. He's dead! Tom, Tom, come back here. Come back here. Tom! Oh, you crazy idiot. Who says he's dead, huh? Might just as well be, I suppose. You hung yourself. Sure, sure. Oh, brother. You're not heavy or anything, are you, Jared? Tom! Hey, anybody! Okay, come on, Hermit. Let's get you out of here. You need help fast. Hey, you. You the pharmacist? Yes, that's right. What do you have? Get out to that car as fast as you can. There's a man been choked. Hit over the head, too. What? Yeah. Well, of course. Uh, Joe, uh, you too. Come on. Come on, go on. I'll be with you in a minute. Well, hello. No. Well, well, sit down, sit down. I have a piece of pie. No, thanks, Mr. Merton. So, yeah, had enough prying around in the booby at you. Hermit's hollow. Once a year is all I can stand. Sure, for. sure. Whose taxi is that out there? Hmm? Oh, waiting for me. I got a job back in real life, as they call it, to worry about. See the house from here, but nothing happening yet. What? What are you talking about? What's the matter? Come on, come on, let's wait in the taxi. Hmm. Hey, what are all those guys doing around that car across the street? Police will be here in a minute. What? Come on, get in the cab. Wait to, Mac. No place. Jared Binks may be dead or alive, I don't know. He was hanging from the chandelier. Jared? But... Now look here, Only person son, I... strong enough around there to lift him up for it is that woman, I guess, that Mabel. Well... Get your eyes off of my muscles. Oh, you weren't there. I haven't got any muscles. Unless Jared hung himself, but that's a fat chance. Besides, I've got a sore neck, too. Now, look, man. And that rope around me wasn't pulled tight. And I don't know what knocked me out. But if Mabel was telling the truth, if she had been a nurse and worked around an asylum, well, it's one way to quiet somebody in a hurry. Slap them in the back of the neck, heel of the hand. Hey, what are you guys talking about? Just keep turned around, driver. I'd like to know what you're talking about, too. Well, why wasn't the rope around me pulled tight? Why wasn't I killed? Go ahead, watch the house. I can see the alley entrance. What for? Oh, we're not waiting for Mabel to show up. That's a police job. By now, she must be blocks from here. Yeah, so am I. You know, Martin, it's pretty clear. I got the flashlight off her service porch. I don't know who else could have been upstairs to throw that shadow of the noose and then duck in a hurry. Well, stop looking so sad. Mabel's a hired hand. That's all a female thug. Oh, brilliant. But what I'm not sure of is who she works for. Hey, look. What? There he is. There's Tom. Uh, well, how Yeah, the mean? little man himself with the suitcase. Oh, yes. Uh, follow right along, driver. Okay. Yeah, I guess Jared had all the courage. It's a cinch Tom couldn't ever face the police again, so he's finally running. Hey, what's that? No, the guy's walking up there. Just he keep did... your mind in the front seat, driver. And yeah, that's what the rope was put on me for, I guess. Same reason as the hangman's knots and the shadow of the noose. To scare the Binks boys. Only what happened with Jared? He catch on who was doing it? That why he was strung up to put the final fright into Tom and make him run? Oh, stop driveling. Tom! Hey, Tom! Huh? Who is it? It's me, Merton. Over here, Tom. If there were any emeralds in that house, nobody would ever find them. The Binks has never talked about them. Must have been pretty hard on you, Merton, wondering how you could get your hands You're on them. You're smart enough to know a gun when you see it, I hope. Huh? Hey, what the... You too. Shut up. Oh, hello, Tom. Hop in. Well, I don't know. I... It's all right, Tom. You can tell me some things. Like who this guy Merton really is. I told you... Tom, Tom, get in here. Uh -huh. Get in. Well, of course. Hello, Merton. Don't point that gun at me. You see, Merton's been so careful to get himself an alibi. Taxi already and waiting. Shut up, I told you. And Merton told me he came to see you men once a year to handle your business affairs. Well, I have one of it. Once a year in April... One month after income tax? Does that make any sense for a business manager? All right, genius. You've said enough. Goodbye. Well, uh, Merton. Give me that suitcase. 
Come on, I'll step on it. There's no, and no. You, you get out from behind the wheel and turn around. Hey, what in the... I'm what? leaving you right now. Get your hands off that... Give him the suitcase, Binks. It has the emeralds, right? Isn't that the point of the whole business, to scare you into running? And when you run, the one thing you take with you is the emeralds that a man could spend his life searching for in that house? That a man could get one at a time, you mean, once a year. Yeah, that's who I am. I handle a business, all right. One at a time, once a year. Martin, please. But never a glimpse of the rest of them. Well, now I've got the whole mess. Get out of my way. You're going to mess, all right, Buster. But look out! I'll kill him. Not in April, brother. sweetheart! Mr. Valentine, yes, y- y- yes, that's all true. Give me the suitcase then, Tom. This guy's safe for the police. I want to find how your brother is. Uh, but people will come and they'll bother me. There, there'll be policemen and photographers. Well, there's nothing wrong with you having the rest of the emeralds. But Jared and I only use the emeralds to carry on our work. Now, now this suitcase, you, you open it. What the... <laughs> is there anything wrong, Mr. Valentine? <laughs> Well, no, not from your point of view, friend. But in a few minutes, I get a date with Miss Brooks and a guy named McHugh at my office. I'm going to find out how they can take a surprise. Count on Chevron Supreme to give you all eight gasoline qualities you need for dependable all-around driving. Be sure you get not one, not two, but all eight gasoline qualities... Area blending, mileage, power, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, starting, warm-up, and acceleration. Ask for Chevron Supreme at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations, where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Bird feathers. You heard me, McHugh. Skins of birds. That's what he carried in that suitcase. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, if Tom could take one thing of value from the house, that was it. After all, what are emeralds compared to birds? Jared Binks will be all right, George. Good, Brooksy, that's fine. The police caught that woman, Mabel. She had been working for Merton. Birds. (laughs) Yeah, you see, McHugh, Merton finally got an itchy palm and ganged up with Mabel to try and scare the boys into running. That's the only way they'd get excited enough to tip where they'd hidden them. Bird feathers. They had over a hundred emeralds. And how many did Merton sell for them through the years? Seven. Well, what's the matter? What are you sore about? He wants to know where the rest of them are, George. But Tom and Jared will never tell. Mr. McHugh, we got your story for you. What if we didn't find the emeralds? It's certainly a better story than the usual vampire Scotland Yard confessions of a werewolf that you usually print in that story. Yes, 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 yes. But it's a little wild, don't you think? The noose hangs high. Hmm? See what I mean? Who will ever believe it? Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Bob Griffin was heard as Tom, Forrest Lewis as Jared, Ted Osborne as McHugh, Larry Dobkin as Merton, Noreen Gamil as Mabel, and Tim Graham as Jake. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.